let our technical producer get this broadcast to Facebook. Uh, it takes just a minute to push all the buttons and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tanya Amri. I'm the Director of Community and Economic Development for the City of Bangor, and I'm joined by Ann Krieg, our Planning Officer. And we're here tonight to facilitate a listening session on short-term rentals in the City of Bangor. We're going to start with just a few introductory comments to set the stage for our discussion, and then we'll jump right into listening to your feedback and trying to answer any questions that you may have. First, why are we doing this work? <clears throat> The effort to create this policy is from the Affordable Housing Work Group recommendations from March of 2019. The recommendation was to consider a policy regarding units shifting from traditional rentals to short-term rentals, such as platforms like Airbnb or VRBO. There was no policy guidance from the Affordable Housing Work Group. It was simply raised that the issue should be examined and considered. We've implemented other recommendations already from this planning effort, such as accessory dwelling units, reducing lot sizes and setbacks in some residential zones, and encouraging housing development and investment. Secondly, the reason we're doing this work is because this use is not currently allowed. The Land Development Code in Bangor does not have it defined, so technically it's not allowed. There are people that are renting this way, and we know that there are people who want to rent this way, so it's important for the city to have this discussion and to then create a policy. Oh, Anne, you're still muted. <laughs> it's terrible when we still do that after all this time using Zoom. So um, one of the confusing things uh, that might be out there, aspects of this work is, you know, what is a short-term rental? And that's in part what we're trying to do with this exercise. But typically, when we talk about a short-term rental, we're talking about people that rent a room in their home or rent out the whole dwelling unit for a period of less than 30 days. This means that if someone's renting um, a room in their house for more than 30 days to the same person um, or renting their whole house out for more than 30 days, um, that's not a short-term rental, but is a temporary resident and not a visitor. So there's a clarification there. I think that distinction is important because there's some confusion as we know many people rented tenants for uh, a month or, or more at a time uh, to that same person. Um, and that's not what we're discussing today. This discussion is focused on rentals that may last a night, a weekend, or a few weeks to a person or a group of people. So I wanna go over just some of the pros and cons that you might consider as you think about your feedback on this type of policy. Some pros are that short-term rentals can provide viable options for travelers, transient workforce, vacationers, as well as an income stream for property owners. It can make it easier or more affordable for people to experience or visit Bangor and hopefully creates a positive impression. The cons can be that in some markets it pushes up prices as owners typically make more money from short-term rentals than from year-round rentals. It can take away units from the year-round rental market and sometimes there are changes in neighborhoods that come from not having year-round occupancy in homes or apartments. There's a survey on the city's website that is, is also seeking public input. So tonight is the second of two workshops that we're doing, but we also um, have a survey and the focus of the survey is to give residents an opportunity to register, register your comments um, it, on specific options that we're, that we're looking at. Um, it's not meant to be a formal scientific survey, but really as a way to um, help people formulate their opinions on all of the different aspects of short-term rentals. For example, um, whether to allow a short-term rental everywhere uh, make everybody register and be inspected or not, allowing it in certain districts, allowing it in single family um, owner occupied homes, whether it be renting by a room or renting out the whole house, 
or um, creating an overlay uh, for neighborhoods where you want to allow it or maybe that neighborhoods that you want to protect from it. So we want to, um, you know, the survey is meant to give you those options to be able to give us your comments. You can also email us at housing at Bangor, Maine, spelled out, gov. And that's another way to get your comments to us. If you don't want to speak tonight or you're watching this at a, at a later date, you can still get comments to us in those ways. So what we're looking for today is how you feel about all of these options. Um, and what happens with this information is we're going to put it together in a report to the Business and Economic Development Committee. And we're going to try to refine some of the options um, that were in the report that uh, we worked on a few a couple of weeks ago um, try to refine those and then you know have a discussion with that committee thank you Anne. finally i want to just set some parameters for our discussion today <clears throat> first of all please confine your comments to short-term rentals this is an important issue to address now as there are residents that want direction and we're aware that the use is already happening when it's not technically currently allowed the Land Development Code has been around in Bangor since about 1940, so for over 80 years, the city has regulated some elements of how people use their property. Zoning in the Land Development Code protects you from having a noisy, smelly factory next to your home, and while we understand that there are some people that would like no regulation of properties in Bangor, that is not the topic at hand today. Second, we understand and respect that use of people's property can be a deeply personal issue. Your home is likely your largest investment. We know from experience that this discussion can be contentious in many communities and divisive. We ask for your comments here today to be respectful, honest, and clear. We're here to listen to you. Finally, we've allotted an hour for this event. We're doing this so that we can gather input and collect it, as Anne said, for the Business and Economic Development Committee and the Planning Board. We're going to start with the Zoom participants, those that are attending. If you would like to speak, please use the raise hand function. You'll see that at the bottom of your screen. You should be, have, looks like a little hand. Um, raise your hand and I will simply start at the top of the raised hand list and work our way down. When you're called on to speak, you will be unmuted, but your video will not be turned on and you will not be seen if you do not want to be seen. If you do turn your camera on while you are in, the, in as a participant, you will be seen, okay? So just be careful, be thoughtful about that. <laughs> we don't want anybody to have an accident they don't wanna have. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, you may type your comment in, as a comment on the Facebook video. Our moderator will compile all of these comments as we've done with all the comments from the previous listening session and the emails we've received. And these will all become part of our public record to present to the planning board and the council. If you have additional comments or you would like to share this information with other people and wish to direct them, we have that email address Ann mentioned earlier, housing at bangormain.gov. And that's a great you know, one-stop shop if you have any other questions or comments or concern about this topic. All right, with all that being said, let's get started. Uh, first on my list with a hand raised is Lisa Karen. Lisa. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I am the legislative chair for the Greater Bangor Area Association of Realtors. So I had some people who have already reached out to me with some questions and we are very clear that this is less than 30 days and understand there's no, um, they're not supposed to be doing this anyway at this point. So these are for people that are buying multi-units um, or single family homes to Airbnb, BB, BRBO, et cetera. So some of the things that they had brought up that um, I hadn't heard or gotten any information on was, um, is there an actual chart that we can see that shows that the, um, the Portland, there was something you guys said um, about Portland versus Bangor and that we're actually more expensive now than Portland is. And we wanted to make sure that I could actually show that in the next meeting, um, that that's exactly what was happening, where the information came from. That's number one. I didn't know if that was available. Number yep. two. Lisa, do you want yeah. me to answer them as we go? Um, sure, that might be easier. Okay, sure. it might be easier for us if you've got a list. Um, yep. Yes, I, I want to correct your verbiage. Um, we are not sure. more expensive. We are less affordable. Um, expensive is a flat number to number comparison. Affordable is a ratio of income to expense. And so 
Uh, the data that we used is in our housing uh, report that is available at bangormaine.gov slash housing. And that data was gathered from the state level data that's collected by Maine Housing as part of their housing affordability research that they do. Great, thank you for explaining that. That is very different than the take that I took. Um, secondly, um, some of the pros that were coming in that were a little bit concerning that um, they didn't quite understand that um, the infrastructure is, is lessened with a short-term rental. The, um, the ability to keep up on the properties and keep it nicer versus a long-term rental is actually better because they get bad feedback if anything is not good. So they're finding that they get people maybe temporary, but they're keeping their places up so they can get good scores, so to speak. I don't do Airbnb, but these are things they're saying, scores on, on the feedback. And uh, they're not using the school system. They're not using other things, but what they are doing is they're bringing money into the community that can help those that do live here pay, they can get more infrastructure built from those taxes that are being received. So I didn't know if you could comment on that as well. I guess I'm not clear about your first comment about the infrastructure being lessened. Do you mean they require less services in terms of yes. they don't use the school? Okay, I think the school right. would really be the only thing that they would not utilize that that everybody else would utilize. So I'm, I'm, I don't think, I have not seen where any of our research that we've gathered has said that the infrastructure requirements for short-term rentals, rentals are lessened. Um, and I don't recall if you've seen that anywhere. Uh, I think no. maybe that's a misinterpretation. Certainly we recognize that um, you know, not using the school system uh, lessens the impact in terms of services, but there are lots of homeowners in Bangor that don't use uh, the school services either. Right, and, but I guess in the short term, bringing in the extra money, and they're not using like the fire department, and normally, you know, I think that's, to clarify, I think that's where we're talking about the regular use that we would have in our own homes on a normal basis, because things are kept up. Sure, we understand that, but actually they are all still available to use. We do have public safety responses to short-term rental properties already, so they do utilize the services. Maybe not okay. at as high of a level, but it is it's available to them and, and, and that's something that we can't discount. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Oh, I know you want to say something. Ann. Yeah, no, I just wanted to add that. And we did hear a lot of comments uh, yesterday about upkeep that, you know, that uh, this sort of self-policing with companies like Airbnb, um, other independent companies other than Airbnb that people rent from don't have that level of oversight and moderation. Um, but definitely the larger companies do. So that's, okay. we heard that a lot yesterday. Okay, that's good to know. And then my last question was, um, as I was hearing you guys um, earlier, not at noontime, but today, tonight, um, you mentioned something about whether uh, they could restrict maybe or, or pick and choose what neighborhoods that it could be allowed or shouldn't be allowed. That's a little concerning with fair housing. I want to be super careful with that, that we don't, um, if, and I agree that things need to be done. If this is a zero tolerance at this point, you shouldn't be doing it. We need to do something. I totally get that. But I'm a little concerned that they'd, we'd be redlining and saying, oh, we can't do it over here on West Broadway, but we can do it over here on Third Street. Um, is there a way to make sure that it's going to be evenly spread and not clustered so that it does affect maybe, uh, I think, Ann, you mentioned on the news, your neighborhood has changed. Um, well, and I, is there something to that? Well, I think it's more to the point that we're trying to get from, from you folks, from the public, if that is the case. Are there neighborhoods that are more concerning than others or, or not? You know, that's, it, we really have a blank sheet of paper um, that we're working off of that we're trying to get input from you. But those are some of the options. Like if, if the city found that, you know, there are certain areas of the community, whether it be by a zoning district or by a neighborhood that people were concerned with, then there might be, you know, something the city could do. But it really, we're, we're here to hear from you. Like, if, so what I'm hearing, in other words, is that you don't want to see that kind of, um, 
you know, that kind of fine tuning of this use in the different neighborhoods? Well, what I'm, what I'm, oh, I don't want to put it quite that way. I am the conduit here. So I'm the voice of what I'm hearing. So I guess that is some of the concern for some of the people that have reached out to me as their, their voice. Okay. Um, That's good. That's but good. De definitely something to think about. And I'm so glad that you're thinking about fair housing because it's so yeah. important for our business as realtors to make sure that, you know, there are no colors in our business. We, we will put people in rentals. We will put people in homes as long as they can afford to, to do them like you were saying. And there are different levels of that. So I just want to make sure that we're not jumping in to a situation that we don't want to ever be in and go the wrong way. Absolutely. Thank you, Lisa. The Thank next you. one on my list is Jenny Morganweck. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. All right, great. Thank you um, so much. So I, I don't really have a question. I kind of just wanted to provide my personal experience. Um, so I have been living directly downtown for the past six years or so, and I've seen a lot of really good change happening downtown. You know, a lot of I've seen a lot of great businesses come in. The restaurants are being very creative this year, and it's really nice to see um, the amount of visitors, I think, increase. And, and one of the things that I've noticed is there really is nowhere to stay downtown besides the Charles Inn and maybe out at the casino. Um, and that, that's been um, a struggle for, for, you know, I'm from out of state, so having people come to visit me has been a little bit challenging in that sense. Um, I chose to have my wedding not in Bangor because I couldn't accommodate out-of-town guests very well. Um, but that being said, you know, I really do love downtown Bangor so much that I recently purchased um, a building in downtown Bangor to live in with my husband. And it is um, a two unit and we do have an apartment um, that we're still trying to decide what we want to do with. Um, and knowing that, you know, short term rentals aren't allowed right now, that's it, this is a very important topic for us because um, we, we really do respect the fact that um, housing is limited to a certain extent, but, but in living downtown, I know there are actually a lot of affordable apartments for people. Um, so it, it's kind of nice to think that we are opening up the option to have these short-term rentals, because what I would really love to see is just an increase in travelers, visitors, tourism. I really just see that really helping the city and keeping it just growing um, and bringing great businesses in and restaurants and things like that. So as a homeowner here, um, I really do want to kind of, um, urge you guys to consider, uh, you know, something for this, but I also really love the idea of having it regulated, having safety inspections, because, you know, as an Airbnb and home away user, <laughs> I've been in some situations where those things have not been taken into account, and it really can be scary, and I think, you know, safety is number one for me, so, um, so just as, as a resident here, that's basically just my perspective and opinion on it. Great, that's very helpful, Jenny, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Uh, the next hand I have raised is Lance. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Hey, um, yeah, so this is kind of a segue from the last person. I think we're in a fairly s similar position. We bought a building downtown because we wanted to live downtown. Uh, the building we bought, um, the second floor of the building was commercial space, but in order to use it for anything new, um, our choices were to make it a residential space or to put in an elevator, um, which um, just converting it to a residential space was enormously expensive. Um, and so, you know, my comment is, you know, we, we love, we love to have either short term or long term renters in the space. Um, but the short term renters pay the bills and are the ones who have made it possible to pay our mortgage that was required to renovate that space. So the alternative would be for that space to be sitting empty for the next uh, 60 years or so, because no one would be able to afford uh, to renovate it and, and uh, make the kind of income that is needed to cover those kinds of costs. So from our perspective, we, bought, we brought a new space onto the market. We opened a space in downtown for people to come and spend their money and um, 
So, and I agree completely. The last thing I'll say is I agree completely with the previous uh, person who said, I do think that these should be regulated. I do think that they should have to conform to safety uh, standards. Um, and me and my wife travel extensively when we can, and we stay at Airbnbs um, as much as we possibly can. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so those are, those are my two cents. Great, thank you very much, Lance. I appreciate it. Who else would like to contribute to the conversation? Okay. We have lots of attendees, just no hands up. <laughs> All right, Dan, you are up next. Just give him one second to get your mic unmuted. Can you hear me now? We can, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I guess I kind of like to know what the basic concerns about short-term rentals might be. I have, I live on the east side of the city and um, I have a longer, it's not a 30, usually not a 30 day rental. Um, and all the years that I have rented on a longer term, I've really not had any issues. So I'm kind of con concerned and curious as to what you would perceive the basic concerns would be. Sure, thank you for the question, Dan. The general concern that we've started to see in Bangor on a very, very small scale, but have seen in other cities, and just for one second, I know um, larger cities are often cited in studies because that's where the critical mass is and the research is done, but we've seen this in smaller cities as well, um, where the short-term rental market, because it does pay um, on average higher returns, um, the units that could be available for long-term renters become turned into short-term rentals, and that pushes the people who make our community great into other communities. So, for example, the server that brings you your amazing plate of food at 11 Central may not be able to afford to find an affordable apartment in Bangor anymore because the units that are available are be being converted into short-term rentals because the yield is higher. And that's the concern that other communities who have discussed regulation have really been trying to balance. We need firefighters and teachers and police officers and, and retail clerks and everybody in the workforce to be able to have a place in Bangor in order for our community to be a great place and making sure that all of those folks have access to affordable housing that meets their needs um, is a concern that the city is keeping an eye on, something that we're aware of and something that we're trying to look at the data um, to understand and trying to look at what other communities have done to try to put policies in place that can balance all of those needs. Okay, so that is the overriding basic concern. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Thank and you. I think to add to that, Bangor is in an unusual um, good situation where, um, you know, we're looking at this early on. A lot of communities around the country and around the world that are grappling with this, they're grappling with it because it's a, it is a huge problem. So we're trying to do some proactive planning work to see, okay, is you know, is this a concern for the city? Is this something that we need to look at? Okay, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thanks for the question, Dan. And please, you don't have to have a, a full-blown speech or a specific question. It could just be a thought or a concern or something you want us to consider. We'd be happy to hear that as well. Uh, the next hand is Dominic Rizzo. Dominic. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Anne. Hey. Hello, good to see you. Uh, good to see you again. I did speak yesterday and I'm not going to repeat what I said, but I just wanted to, I have one question and um, then just a comment about accessory dwelling units that perhaps if we could allow them to be Airbnbs if the property is owner occupied. I think South Portland or other towns, uh, cities are, are allowing that and I'm hoping that that might be the case because the cost of potentially putting one in is gonna be very expensive. And uh, so that's the one comment. And I was curious about your thoughts on South Portland. There seems to be, I mean, at least a little bit I've read about it being in there. Um, oh gosh, what's it called again? Whatever the rules are, there seems to be a little confusion or um, people aren't necessarily happy with uh, what is there. So I don't know if you know any more about that and, and have thought about it in regard to our, you know, having it, you know, in regard to Bangor and what we will do. So um, any thoughts? 
first i will say your first comment about airbnb i'm sorry about accessory dwelling units is a great comment thank you for that um, accessory dwelling units are something that's relatively new. We did add that as a result of the housing work group um, research that was done. And we're really hoping that that will encourage people to utilize ADUs as a way to, um, to create additional income or possibly still be able to stay in a property. Um, so I love that idea. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I don't think that we've looked with the fine tooth comb through other regulations and other communities to see what we might pick from here or from there, because we didn't want to start diving into um, regulatory language until we heard from the community. We have come into this as a blank sheet of paper to say, mm -hmm. here are some of the things that we've seen and heard from other communities, just big picture. Um, here are some of the things that we've seen in the market in Bangor. What does the community think? What does the community want? Do people care if the house next to you turns over every week um, and you have different visitors? Do you love the, you know, getting to meet new friends or, do, you know, do you, does it bother you? We, we don't know. We want to hear from people um, what their opinions are. So we have not compared sort of a side by side. Um, typically, Dominic, you probably know from from watching us do a lot of our policy work. Once we get a sense of what the council and the planning board kind of want us to do in terms of direction, we'll start going to a lot of those municipalities in the state of Maine and kind of comparing side by side some of the language and some of the pros and cons that they've determined. So um, not quite there yet, but that will probably be part of the process. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, the next hand I see is Candace Schaff. Candace. Hi, are you able to hear me? We can, thank you, go ahead. Okay, I just popped in, so I apologize if what I'm going to say has already been addressed. Um, I uh, am not for Airbnb being allowed or short-term rentals being allowed in Bangor, especially not all of Bangor. Um, I've done research on this um, over the past few years and um, I just had a couple of examples. I mean, there's an article in Forbes, which is not exactly you know, a liberal um, newspaper or magazine, um, showing, uh, stating that um, oftentimes um, Airbnb rentals have resulted in higher rents. Um, Bangor is already pretty expensive to live in, especially given the average income in the area and an article from the BBC, which um, states there are good things, but there are also bad things that happen. Um, let me see here. For example, um, there is not just um, the possibility of higher rents, there's also a possibility of tenant expulsion, um, simply daily disruptions. Um, I popped in as you were talking about whether you like meeting new people. I consider myself a friendly person personally, but I don't have an interest in getting to know new people every week. I like having steady neighbors, but this isn't about me. I'm really more concerned as to what it would do to people who are in need and the fact that it would raise rents and I mean, we already have a problem in Bangor of people who are not invested in the community, um, owning a lot of these homes and renting them out and not maintaining them well. Um, not always, but that is a known problem um, and charging high rents. And I feel like short-term rentals are going to add to that problem. That's it. Great, thank you so much. And Candace, if you wanna share any of those studies, if you wanna email the links to housing at bangormain.gov, um, that's a great way for us to add those to the list of information that we're collecting. So those can be a resource too. That was housing at bangormain.gov? Yep, yep housing yeah. at bangormain.gov, all spelled out. Thank you. Okay. That's very thank helpful. You. Thank you. Okay, I see we have additional participants that have not raised their hands. They may not may just be listening to the conversation. We'll give it another minute or two and see if there are any hands raised. Um, if there are, okay, uh, I have one. It uh, no, I'm not sure if it's a first name or a last name. I apologize in advance. Edelman. We're hoping <laughs> yeah. it's Julian. We're hoping it's Julian Edelman. Uh, I only wish. <laughs> My first name is Rita, R-E-D-A. Hello, Rita. Go right ahead. 
Well, I've just been taking in a little bit of what everybody's saying. And um, here's my thoughts. My philosophy is every day, someone is traveling somewhere for some reason. And when they get to that destination, they need a place to stay. Okay. I have stayed in a hostel in Seattle. I have stayed in Airbnbs in Boston, Portland, Oregon, Anchorage, Alaska, and Anaheim, California. And I've had always good um, a host. I've always enjoyed my stays in the Airbnb. <laughs> now, um, hosts get rated by their guests when they leave, and the the guests get rated by the host. And Airbnb has certain uh, regulations and requirements. It isn't just like um, – <laughs> It's definitely a, a very heavily monitored situation. And I don't think we can compare ourselves to L.A. or Portland, Oregon or Seattle. Some of these places, okay, Las Vegas, okay, where they go there, uh, it's like um, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Bangor is not like that. So it's like, whoa, this is far far over thinking this whole situation <laughs> I'm sorry I, uh, I, I'm I just blown away by it to be honest with you because I think Airbnb is um, the best way to go when I came here three years ago I spent three nights down at the Charles Inn oh my gosh okay um, it was a nice place but very very exciting Expensive. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, Thank I'm you all for Airbnb. Okay. Um, one thing I just want to add, and I, I guess I probably should have said this in the disclaimer, we yeah. use the word Airbnb, the term Airbnb, as sort of uh, interchangeably with short-term rentals, and that's really not appropriate. We should be referring to the use, not the company. Um, the zoning policy that the city council will will set and the direction and the policy that we create as a community outlives any particular city, uh, any particular business or um, organization. So, for example, many people have said, well, Airbnb has very high standards, very strict rules. You can't do, yes, this, they you can't do. do that. But when there's Air G and G, which is a knockoff company that doesn't have such high standards, we don't have that same protection. So I want people to understand that we can't base our policy decisions as a community on the rules of one particular business. We have to think about the use in general and what are sort of the baseline protections, if any, for example, basic safety inspections, things like that, that we want to put into place um, for that particular use. I just want people to not rely on whatever parameters Airbnb sets, because there are already many other companies, HomeAway, VRBO, people do it on Craigslist. There's all kinds of other companies okay that don't have the same standards and, and we have to be thoughtful of that as we're thinking about direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, our next hand, uh, Lisa, you, uh, no one else is looking to speak another, for the first time. There's another person, Michelle. Oh, I see Michelle, I'm so sorry. Michelle, we're gonna take your comment first just because Lisa has already had a chance to speak. Go ahead, Michelle. Hi, can you hear me? We can, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to share maybe a tenant perspective. Um, I'm a homeowner in Bangor now, but um, I had this experience in Denver uh, before I moved here when the Airbnb was kind of exploding there. And um, I lived in a, with my daughter who's nine um, in an, it was a huge house that had apartments in it. And the landlord did turn one of the apartments into an Airbnb. And I think from a tenant perspective, um, or even neighbors, you know, to have, um, there was turnover, maybe one to three different individuals or groups per week there, and having to come home where you don't know the people that are there is just very uncomfortable, and you really don't have the power to do anything about it. And then the, the other thing I think would be important to consider is um, the um, decriminalization or uh, recreational marijuana and how that might impact 
um, short-term rentals in neighborhoods uh, for neighbors or for uh, fellow tenants in a building. So I just recommend um, maybe taking that into your policy considerations of what could, um, what kind of impact that could have on people, the surrounding people. That's very helpful. Thank you, Michelle, for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Lisa. You can unmute yourself, I think. All right, sorry about that. I thought I was okay. unmuted to me. Um, I just been getting some, some messages from agents out there to clarify one thing that I said and to add two things. Um, the first one was about the infrastructure being a positive um, factor on it. They said, specifically, you need to mention housing assistance and social programs are not being used. And those can be very expensive. So I want to make sure I put that out there. Um, the other one was they're saying a lot of the people that they're selling to for short term uh, or buildings that may be short term rentals in the future or, or, or already are apparently are local people more than out of state people. So they are people in the community. They want to make sure you guys understood that they that, that is a higher ratio than an out-of-state person. And the last person said, you need to mention about the difference between short-term and long-term because if we've got a short-term person, we are not having to deal with a bad tenant and having to evict them and have months and months of non-payment damage for our property and then maybe not even getting them out depending on what time of the year is. And I think this is more important now that this COVID, this has been happening a lot because of the new regulation. So I'm done, that was it. <laughs> That's very helpful, Lisa, thank you. And thank you. continue to get comments, please feel free to email them or have your agents reach out to us directly as well. They can, they can give us a shout, they can call or um, email. We're trying to use the email just because that way they all get into one written form. Um, yes. We've got quite a novel started already. <laughs> We appreciate awesome. that. Thank appreciate you. Okay. Anybody else? We're scheduled for an hour, but if we don't have raised hands, we can wrap up a little bit sooner. Oh, Aaron. Aaron. Your Zoom is faster than mine, Anne. <laughs> All right, Aaron, go right ahead. You can unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Thank I you. Just wanted, thank you. I just wanted to kind of follow up a little bit on, I think her name was Rita uh, Edelman. Um, you know, we, uh, we are relatively new owners of a duplex in Bangor. It's been a couple years and we had never intended to do long-term, traditional long-term, like yearly rental or like a year lease rental. Um, when we began, we knew we wanted to provide short term as, as in three months or longer to traveling professionals because we wanted to have something furnished and offer them something that everything was included. Um, and that's gone very well for us. You know, it, it, it takes care. We are, we are owner occupiers. So we live in one unit and we rent out the other. So it was good to know um, the people coming in were background checked and things like that before we even started the conversation, because we do have a family, you know, teenagers that live with us as well. Um, so all of that, we understand the concerns of safety and neighborhoods and, and all along those lines. However, um, this past year, with COVID being an issue, we saw a, a very big decline in the need for traveling professionals. People weren't allowed to come in. Um, our, bang, our Bangor hospitals were actually having, you know, voluntary layoffs and things like that. So we didn't see a lot of that. And we certainly were not willing to take on a long-term renter in a place when we had a moratorium on evictions if people weren't paying. Um, so for us, having the ability to have someone come in for a week or two weeks because they were also working remotely from home and they could get away and, and stay here in the apartment and work for a week and I'll be, I mean, I'll be honest, um, most people who come here, they come and they'll go to downtown 
they'll use, you know, they'll spend time in the area, but there's not a lot of touristy attractions in our area. You know, only so many times you can go on a Stephen King bus tour. We love him, but you know, not everybody's into that. So we have a lot of people who come and they spend their money in local restaurants. Um, you know, they, they bring their money to the community, but they're also going out to places like Bar Harbor for the day. So at the, t you know, at the height of COVID, um, they weren't here, they were in their vehicle, they were going and being outside, you know. Um, I guess I have a couple concerns where, you know, as, as new venturers into the rental aspect of it, it seems like that would have set us up to fail had we not had the option to do a shorter term rental when we were already losing kind of our core base of who we would rent to. Um, and also regarding zoning, I, to me that that's just kind of fancy talk <laughs> for saying we're gonna pick the winners and the losers. Maybe in the affluent areas, people don't necessarily wanna see people coming and going, so they can't do it, but maybe over on you know, another area, it would be allowed. So I, I don't really like that aspect of the conversation, but would like more clarification on it. Um, and the other thing I would say is that, yeah, I think someone mentioned, you know, they're friendly and, and they like to meet new people, but they wouldn't necessarily want to meet somebody every week. Most of our people aren't going and greeting the neighbors. <laughs> they come, they park, they use, they use the rental, um, and then they move on. Uh, you know, right now we're in a situation where we have a, a three month or longer rental lease happening. So it's not a concern at this very moment, but, you know, as far as people getting out and being in the neighborhood, when I go to an Airbnb, I'm not going to visit the neighbors at the Airbnb I'm staying at. I'm going to see the area. So I, I think that would be one of the things that, you know, you're not necessarily even going to know that they're a short-term person. They're coming, they're parking, they're sleeping, and then they're going to do whatever they're going to do while they're here. Okay. And do you want to speak to the zoning issue, the point that um, she raised about zoning? Yeah, sure. Um, Thank you. Again, we, you know, we really have a, a a blank page here in terms of, you know, limiting it to certain areas. We're we're asking you, do you think that's a good idea? And what I'm hearing you say is, you're not sure that's a good idea because is it sort of an equity issue? Like some neighborhoods could do it and some couldn't type of thing. And so that's you know that's a good comment. That's the kind of that's the kind of thing we're we're looking to get from you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I see another hand, Frances. You can go ahead on, and unmute yourself. There you yeah. go. Hi, Dan. Hi, Annie. Hey, I was on uh, yesterday, got a lot out of it, had a little bit more time to think about it. And it just seems like there's a little bit of conversation going back uh, as far as landlords. And then it's going back about uh, Airbnbs, and then it's going back about motels. But I'm just wondering about in single family homes. So when it comes to nuisance calls that the police department's taking, I think if we looked at the whole big picture and we could, and we probably have the data on where the nuisance calls come from. And it's probably, I wonder if it's fairly equal across all segments. In other words, single family homes, we make calls on from the local PD. Uh, I got, I got, I've had people over the years that live in a single family home next to me that don't, that I, I don't get along with but I still live there. And so I kind of just, just a different view, Tanya, Annie, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's an interesting I mean, how do you separate? question. Yeah. How do you separate? yeah, and I know um, our police department, I know they have, we have a disruptive property ordinance. So for example, right. if they're, and you're very familiar with it from your work, right. um, if there is a property where there are multiple calls in a certain period right. of time, I'm trying to be very mindful when we crafted that policy to make sure that we still had the opportunity, for example, domestic violence victims. We never want to discourage right. people from calling right. for help when they need it. But um, right. but I, I think that is very interesting because I would be curious to see what the breakdown is in terms of um, utilization of services. And, um, it, you know, our, our first responders are there no matter who calls and no matter when they call, they're going to be there yeah. for them. So yeah. thank yeah. you very much for that perspective. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other takers?
Okay, I guess we'll finish with some closing comments. If anybody rushes to that raise hand button at the last minute, we'll certainly stop and take that comment. But otherwise, um, we'll start to wrap things up. I want to thank everybody for your input. Um, this is not the end of the conversation. This is just the beginning of our public process to try to gather information about how our community feels about the potential for regulation of short-term rentals in Bangor. Um, it's a very important conversation. We want to hear from everybody. So if you have additional thoughts, please email them to housing at bangormain.gov. There's also an entire section on the city's website that we've set up that's dedicated to information about this topic. There's a phenomenal memo that Anne prepared. She's really good at breaking things down in language that people can understand if you're not a planner. Um, I'm her litmus test. So <laughs> it's really helpful for background if you wanna read that memo. There's also information on that uh, website about our housing work group if you're interested in diving into some of, the, some of that data and some of the recommendations that came from that group. That's bangormain.gov, which is the city's website, bangormain.gov slash housing. That's an entire section that's just dedicated to our housing work. Um, Lisa, did you have a final comment? I had an actual question. Did you by any chance record yesterday's and today's uh, video, you know, Zoom calls so that I could go into Bangor gov and access it to review yesterday's because I wasn't able to be on. We sure did. They're all recorded and our amazing public information officer, Angel Matson, happens to already have posted the first session to our website. So you can go to Bangor. Outstanding. Yeah, bangormain.gov slash housing and you should find the first video right there as well. This one will be posted Thank as you. soon as it's processed. Great. Okay, thank you all for your participation. We really appreciate your input and your thoughtful questions and, and also the respectful tone of the dialogue is really encouraging because we know, like we said at the beginning, this can be a difficult issue for communities and for neighbors and we wanna make it um, the most productive conversation that it can be. So um, thank you to Anne, thank you to Angel for their time and putting this together tonight. Thank you to everybody and we will see you around Bangor. Have a good evening. All right, thank you. Thank you and good night. Good night.